Hi everyone and welcome to the Department of Physics at the University of Oxford YouTube channel. My name is Colette Pacusa and I'm a second year DPhil student in Particle Accelerator Physics at the University of Oxford. This will be the first in a series of videos where I'll be speaking to researchers at the University of Oxford who are the experts in their fields about a particular topic in physics that's closely related to their area of research. There will be a variety of topics from many areas of physics, including cosmology, particle physics, and atmospheric physics. I hope you enjoy the videos and thank you very much for watching. In 2012, the Higgs boson was discovered here at CERN, the European Laboratory for Particle Physics, located near Geneva in Switzerland. After 40 years of waiting, it was finally discovered in the Large Hadron Collider, or the LHC a 27 kilometer long particle smasher that accelerates protons near to the speed of light and makes them collide at four different locations 50 million times per second. In these four precise locations, huge particle detectors record what happens just after the collision. It's in these collisions that we're able to reproduce the conditions that only existed shortly after the beginning of the Big Bang. The data produced in the collisions are then analysed to try and understand what the fundamental constituents of the universe are and the interactions that take place. And from time to time, a Higgs boson is produced. The new boson was named after Peter Higgs, who among others predicted the existence of a boson associated with a field that fills empty space and gives mass to the fundamental particles. The interaction strengths of the different elementary particles with the Higgs field is what we call the mass of the particle. The stronger the interaction of the particle with the Higgs field, the larger the mass of the particle. The Higgs boson was the missing piece of the puzzle for the standard model, which is the theory that describes most of what we know about what happens at the subatomic scale. A boson is a particle that carries a fundamental interaction. The photon is the boson associated with the electromagnetic interaction. The W and the Z bosons carry the weak nuclear force, and the gluons are carriers of the strong nuclear interaction. The standard model describes the interaction of the so-called matter particles via the fundamental interactions as described before. There are two types of matter particles. We have the quarks. These are the constituents of the protons and neutrons located in the nucleus of atoms. We also have leptons, where we find the electron and other heavier cousins like the muon and the tau lepton. Each of these leptons have their corresponding neutrino, a ghostly particle that will be the topic of a future video on this channel. The discovery of the Higgs boson was not the end. It is in fact just the beginning. What are the actual properties of the Higgs boson? Is it an elementary particle or does it have some inner structure? How many Higgs bosons are there? To answer these questions and many more, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Professor Daniela Bottoletto who is an expert in this field and also the head of the subdepartment of particle physics at the University of Oxford. Uh, to answer this question, I would like to start by discussing why it took a very long time to discover as a Higgs boson. And this is linked to what we uh, knew that the standard model would predict about this particle. And the standard model is in fact very predictive about the Higgs boson but it does not provide the critical information, which is the mass of the Higgs boson, the mass of this particle. So the Higgs particle is very ephemeral and it can decay to other particles as soon as it is created. So once you know the mass of the Higgs, the standard model tells you how often you create it in a PP bar collision at the LHC, which we call it the cross section. Uh, how often it decays to other particles, which we call the branching ratio, but these predictions are very different according to the mass of the Higgs particle. And the standard model only told us that the Higgs mass should have been lower than one trillion electron volt. The current experiment at the LHC have now measured the mass of the Higgs to be 125 GV, if the Higgs boson would have been more massive than 160 GV, it would have decayed mainly to W and Z boson, the particles that exchange the weak interaction. And it would have been likely discovered at another machine called the Tevatron, which operated before the LHC. Because of the mass of the Higgs is 125 GV, 
it decays to measurable branching fraction to the W and Z boson, but also to quark and leptons. So we are really lucky because this has given us great opportunities. In 2018, we were able to measure also the decay of the Higgs boson to B quarks, and this branching ratio is in fact very large for a Higgs of 125 GV, is about 57% but it's still very challenging to measure it at the LHC because there are many big quarks that are producing other phenomena with much higher probability. So we measure the couplings of the Higgs to other particles by measuring how the Higgs is produced and how it decays. We now have measured the Higgs coupling to the W, the Z boson, and to particle of the third generation, the, uh, the top, bottom, and the tau lepton. Experimentally, the X boson appears to be a scalar particle, uh, which means that it doesn't have any spin as expected by the standard model. And also, all the couplings that we measure up to now indicate that all the predictions agree pretty well with uh, the standard model. Some of the properties of the Higgs boson that we know from theory and from all of the useful data that has been collected since its discovery in 2012. There are still lots of things that we don't know yet about the Higgs boson. Well, we are still uncovering the property of the Higgs boson. For example, while we know that the Higgs couples to the quark and lepton of the third generation, we do not know yet if it couples also to the quark and leptons of the other generation as expected in the standard model. And these studies are very important because they sh could shed light about why we have a free generation of quark and leptons in the standard model. When the muon, which is a heavier copy of the electron, was discovered in 1936, Isaac Rabi famously said, who orders that? because everybody was extremely surprised. In 2020, almost 90 years later, we still do not have any answer about why we have a muon, or more precisely, why we have free generation of fundamental matter particles. And there are other mysteries about the Higgs. Uh, for example, we know that neutrinos have masses, but we don't know if they get their masses through the interaction with the Higgs. And one of the mysteries is the mass of the Higgs boson itself. In the standard model, this occurs through a mechanism that is called self-coupling. And this is probed mainly through the production of two Higgs bosons, which is a very rare phenomenon. We still are very ignorant about this new particle now. To uncover some of the properties of the Higgs boson that we don't know yet, new and larger machines are currently being designed. Uh, first of all, we can do still a lot at the Large Hadron Collider at the LHC and also uh, uh, at its upgrade, which is called the High Luminosity LHC, um, where we will produce uh, many more X boson because uh, the luminosity of the beam of the machine will be much higher. Uh, so uh, what we will do at the Illumi LHC, for example, will be, uh, will be uh, the discovery of the Higgs coupling to muons. Uh, and so uh, through this measurement, we will start probing uh, the, um, the coupling of the Higgs to the second generation of uh, quark and leptons. Uh, but having a new electron positron collider later on will be really phenomenal to study the Higgs boson. Uh, and there are several possibilities on the table. Uh, some proposed accelerators are linear, like the International Linear Collider in Japan and CLIC at CERN, and some are circular, like the CPC in China and the FCC at CERN. And these are all very ambitious proposals. For example, the Future Circular Collider, the FCC, is a project that foresees the construction of a new 100-kilometer circular tunnel that will go under Lake Geneva. The tunnel will first host any plus and minus collider, uh, which we denote as FCCE, which will collide electron and positron at a variety of uh, energy ranging from 90 GV to uh, 365 GV. 
And this will provide, this machine will provide five trillions Z decays, which is over five order of magnitude what was collected at the previous machine called LAP, and one million X boson. And at this machine, we might even be able to produce X boson directly through the collision of the plus e minus at exactly the mass of the Higgs boson. And this would allow to probe uh, the tiny coupling of the Higgs boson to electrons. The design of the interaction region is also as such that uh, we will place the beam pipe only at uh, one centimeter radius from the interaction region. And this is necessary uh, to place a, a precision detector, usually built by on silicon, uh, that will measure the coupling of the Higgs to charm quarks uh, by measuring the Higgs decays to charm quarks. And this measurement will allow us to probe again the coupling to the second generation, and in this case, you know, uh, probing the coupling to quarks belonging to the second generation. After the SCCEE, protons will be colliding in the machine, in the so-called FCCHH, and this machine will provide the highest energies that are foreseeable today of about 100 uh, trillion electron volt, 100 TV, and uh, the FCCHH will produce almost 50 billions X boson per experiment, truly amazing quantity of X boson, and will allow us to study not only double X production, but also really to measure the X coupling, X self couplings, uh, with a statistical precision of a couple of percent with the full statistic. And this would be really, truly uh, exceptional, since the self-interaction is the key to understand the electroweak phase transition in the early universe and could have important cosmological implications. There was a time in the early universe, about a hundredth of a billionth of a second after the start of the Big Bang, when the weak force and the electromagnetic interaction were one, called the electroweak force. After the expansion of the universe, its temperature decreased and this symmetry broke, resulting in the two separate interactions that we have today. And this is what we call electroweak symmetry breaking. Uh, well, we know that the standard model is not enough to explain our universe. A standard model particles, in fact, only make up about the 5% of the energy matter content of the universe. It's really, actually, we, it's really, we know very little. Uh, Susie still remains the best theory to explain naturally why the Higgs boson has a mass of 125 GB and the dark matter that we observe in the universe because of its uh, gravitational interaction. FCCHH would open a new and explore region uh, of, um, region of energies, and this higher energy would also expand our capability of searching for new heavy particles. Furthermore, uh, studies of the X boson itself, uh, before and at this machine, could shed light on SUSY, since SUSY predicts the existence of five X boson like particles. Supersymmetry, also known as SUSY, is one possible explanation to extend the standard model. It requires additional particles that, if we are lucky enough, we can observe in the LHC. Some of these supersymmetric particles would also be perfect candidates for dark matter. And in many SUSY models, the X bosons that we have discovered now uh, would be considered the, la the lightest of the set. And already now we are searching for heavier um, relatives of the Higgs. And uh, so, this machine will just allow us to do this better and also precision measurement of the X couplings that we could already get uh, with much better precision than we can do now at the LHC, at the FCC EE, would also be sensitive to other theory of physics beyond the standard model. Therefore, the Higgs could really point us to the best direction to look for new physics. And this would be really another step forward in our understanding of nature. As we can see, there are many things we don't know yet about the Higgs boson. The journey has just started. New experiments will reveal more details of this fascinating particle. And for every answer nature gives us, many more questions will follow.
I don't know. I just sometimes think that if I think about these questions, uh, I feel like I'm still a student entering particle physics, and I'm as excited today as I as I was when I was a student. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, the Arts and Physics YouTube channel is now publishing videos regularly. Don't forget to subscribe and activate notifications so that you don't miss any future videos. Thank you for watching.